Another nail in the coffin for the SLS program, does this mean that it'll get completely canceled? Plus, a luxury space balloon pops before it even gets the chance to go to space. And yes, this is the second video that I'm releasing today because there's just so much news going on, it's hard to keep up. But let's start with the biggest headline of the day. Boeing has informed its employees that NASA may cancel SLS contracts. And Boeing is the primary contractor for the SLS rocket or Space Launch System rocket. And this is breaking news as of today. According to reporting by Eric Berger, an all hands on deck meeting was scheduled with less than an hour's notice today on Friday, February 7th. Leading the meeting was Boeing's vice president, David Dutcher. And apparently this meeting was quick. It lasted about six minutes. Dutcher didn't take any questions and it sounded very scripted according to people who were at the meeting. And David addressed nearly 800 employees working on the program. Dutcher let those employees know that Boeing's contracts for the SLS rocket could likely end in March and that the company was preparing for layoffs in case the contracts with NASA were not renewed. So yes, this is the official 60 day notice. This notification by Boeing was issued as part of the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification or WARN Act, which requires US employers with 100 or more full-time employees to provide a 60-day notice in advance of mass layoffs or plant closings. A Boeing spokesperson was quoted saying, to align with revisions to the Artemis program and cost expectations, today we informed our Space Launch Systems team of the potential for approximately 400 fewer positions by April 2025. This will require 60-day notices of involuntary layoff be issued to impacted employees in coming weeks in accordance with that WARN Act. The statement continues, we are working with our customer, that would be NASA, and seeking opportunities to redeploy employees across our company to minimize job losses and retain our talented teammates. And according to this Ars Technica article, multiple sources say there has been a healthy debate within the White House and senior leadership at NASA, including acting administrator Janet Petro. And of course, at stake is the future of the SLS rocket and the Artemis moon program. Apparently, the debate is split, though. Some commercial space advocates want to cancel the rocket completely. But Janet Petro has been urging the White House to allow NASA to fly the Artemis II and Artemis III missions using the initial version of the SLS rocket before the program is canceled. And you might have missed it, but I just did an interview with Charlie Camarda. He is a former STS astronaut and one of the first people to fly after the Columbia tragedy. He has issued a dire warning against flying the Artemis II mission with the Orion heat shield as is. So there's already debate about that. And if you wanna watch the video, you can to get the background on that. And what my, my advice to the astronaut office is, you know what we have, we shouldn't fly, but there's a fix for this. It might take several months, but we take these other pieces of foam off and you could fly safe or we change out these wing leading edge panels. And, uh, and so I know how to put together these teams to solve these problems quickly so that the program managers don't have to tell you that they have, you know, what are we never gonna fly again? You know, that's the argument they make and they pressure uh, people to make the decisions. But I also asked one of the people on the NESC team, would you fly on Artemis II? And the person said no. But Charlie, if I was an astronaut like um, Reed Weissman and I was in the office, I would fly on the vehicle. That's why you don't ask astronauts that are assigned to fly, are you ready to fly? You ask the head of the astronaut office and the head of the astronaut office should be looking out for the safety of those astronauts and saying, you know what, this is we, 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 we will accept risk, but this is risk that is unnecessary. We mm. don't have to, we don't have to accept this risk. If we would have done these other things two years ago, when, uh, when really smart technical people were telling them that's what they should do. Mm. And so what happened? And so Ellie, why is NASA broken right now? Because you have program office here that has all the money 
directs all the research dollars, tells everybody what to do, and they have so much more power than the, than the engineering organization down here. Mm. And the people up here, you know, it's like any bureaucracy. The people that have the least knowledge are in the positions that are right. making the most critical decisions. And I asked you guys on X what you think should happen. Should SLS be canceled or should they fly Artemis 2 and 3 using the initial version of the SLS rocket? Remember, a single launch costs in excess of $2 billion. And this excludes payloads or the cost of ground systems. So what does this last minute all hands meeting mean? Well, it's looking more and more likely that the Trump White House might just completely end the SLS program and President Trump will be making a budget proposal in March. So we'll see what happens. Now, of course, Jared Isaacman, who will be the new NASA administrator, isn't confirmed quite yet, and that should happen at the end of this month. So I'm wondering what his opinion is of all of this and what his say will be as well. NASA has already spent about $3 billion a year developing the SLS rocket and its ground systems over the entire program's lifetime. So what do you guys think in the comments? Should SLS be just completely canceled cold turkey or should they try to squeeze out Artemis 2 and 3 missions and then end it from there? Either way, this seems like a pretty good indication that things are not going well for the program and I expect to see it completely canceled. I wouldn't be surprised. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, apparently a luxury space balloon company on Florida's space coast is probably gonna shut down. You may have even seen Space Perspective's ads for their luxury balloon that'll take you to space. I've seen a ton of their ads, but apparently that's part of the problem. Seems like they spent a lot more money on advertising and marketing than actual development. And we have some insight based on an email sent out from the CEO. On February 5th, Space Perspective CEO sent an email to stakeholders. Michael Savage acknowledged the company's inability to secure new funding, mounting debts, and the board's recommendation to begin winding down operations, which is a big bummer because their advertisements looked really cool. We see a lot of ideas for space tourism, and for the most part, they're just ideas. And this idea in particular was for high altitude balloon flights. So for the past few months, Space Perspective has been trying to secure new investments, but this has just not worked out. The CEO says that they had initial interest from potential backers, but uh, they didn't cough up the money. And this is because there are concerns from the people that would have forked over the money about the growing debt and financial instability of the company. Apparently Space Perspective also already has over $90,000 in unpaid rent for three parcels at Space Coast Regional Airport, which led, of course, to them being evicted in January. And you know what? I feel bad for them because this was a bold idea and it would have been really cool if it worked out. Michael Savage, the Space Perspective interim CEO, goes on to say that he, along with co-founders of the company, voluntarily removed themselves from the payroll throughout much of last year and this year. But that's not the end of the story. According to an article from the Launchpad Network, apparently there are mounting accusations of mismanagement from the company's employees. Former employees have accused Space Perspective of reckless financial decisions, including excessive spending on marketing and branding initiatives at the expense of critical manufacturing and operational needs. Some former employees have also claimed that they had delayed employee paychecks, a lack of transparency from their leadership, and ignored internal warnings about financial instability. It's unfortunate that this won't work out because in September of 2024, not that long ago, Space Perspective conducted a successful uncrewed test flight of its spaceship Neptune Excelsior, reaching an altitude of 100,000 feet. So I thought that this was just an interesting tie-in to the idea of SLS completely being canceled. And apparently this luxury space balloon being canceled by not getting enough money and not spending money effectively. We know that space is hard and it's also hard to have a successful company in the space industry. And it just gives me a lot of respect for the companies that are able to make it. 
So sorry for the second video in one day, but I thought that this was an important update to give you. And thanks so much for watching my channel. I'll see you in the next video.